recording. Welcome to the webinar, it's 10 a.m. My name is Christopher Garcia, I'll be coordinating today's webinar. I wanna tell you about our distinguished panelists today, C. Sandro Totini, he's the Vice President of Lending for West, which is the Women's Economic Sustainability, help me out here, Sandro. Women's Economic Self-Sufficiency Team, it's an awesome. Self-Sufficiency Team, thank you. Sandro came to West after hearing about the work with, that West did with the underserved communities. He developed a passion for teaching and increasing financial capability after a career in retail banking and market research. A trilingual first-generation American and personal witness to the American dream, Sandro takes pride and finds fulfillment in serving marginalized communities. Sandro graduated with honors from the University of New Mexico, where he studied operations and marketing. He's currently pursuing a master's degree in finance. In addition to overseeing West's statewide microloan program, Sandra also directs the statewide implementation of West Money Learning Lab. And uh, before we begin, I wanna make sure everybody could see and hear us. So if you could see and hear us, can you put your hand up for me? Good, good, thank you guys. That will be the alert. If anything goes wrong, maybe we're not on the right page that we're talking about. Maybe you can't see or hear the presentation. So if any of that goes on during uh, our presentation today, please raise your hand. Uh, you could chat with me in the background if something's going on. And if you have any questions about the presentation, please put them into the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. In fact, just so I know um, everybody could use the Q&A feature, can you um, type in a hi, hello, how are you for me, please? Hi, Anna. Buenos dias, Carmen. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Terry. Hi, Adelina. And hi, Bill. I knew it was you, Bill. And Kelly says hi again, thank you. I have faith that everybody knows how to use uh, the Q&A. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to C. Sandro Toti. You think after two years, I'd figure out how to keep my mic on. Sorry about that. Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Sandro Tonini. I'm the Vice President of Lending for West. Uh, West is an SBA resource partner. So we work very closely with SPDC to help people start and build um, their business. Um, we're gonna talk about the basics of borrowing today. I'm gonna give you a background on Wes, um, provide you with some resources um, and some next steps. We're gonna have Q and A session. We're gonna have a Q and A session at the end, but if anything pressing comes up while I'm on a slide, or um, if I need to repeat something, please use that Q and A box um, and type your questions away. Um, so like I said, we're talking about the basics of borrowing today. Um, I strung together these pictures here at the top. Uh, these are actual borrowers um, that, that West serves. Uh, you know, we, we have been in New Mexico for over 30 years and we're very, very dedicated and committed um, to helping people across New Mexico um, start, stabilize, or grow their business. We are a home for entrepreneurs. We were founded in 1989 and we offer wraparound services for anyone that wants to start, stabilize, or grow a business. Those wraparound services are one-on-one -on -one consulting so people can meet with a consultant one-on-one um, -on, -one on specific problems or to do a needs analysis um, or to, to reach a goal, get connected with resources. We also conduct small business trainings and workshops, um, much like this one, um, all over the state on a number of topics. Um, we do trainings on marketing, um, marketing, advertising, business finances, accessing capital, um, operations within your business, HR, contracting, government contracting, just anything under the sun um, when it comes to small and micro businesses, we've got a training for it. These trainings are constantly evolving and growing um, along with the, the landscape. We also do small business loans that we'll talk about here in just a moment. In Albuquerque, we have our West Enterprise Center and it's a, an incubation building and we'll talk about that shortly. And then we also have the Comcast Digital Media Studio. So we're able to um, produce digital media as far as videos, photos, webinars, um, conferences, commercials, um, things of that nature, because we have a full-blown state-of-the-art Hollywood-level studio um, within our building here in Albuquerque. We have seven locations across the state. Six of them have received certification as SBA Women's Business Centers. Okay? 
Um, we have one in Albuquerque. We're here on the corner of Lomas and Broadway. We've got Farmington. Where we're housed within the San Juan Community College. Um, we've got Hobbs, where we're housed within the Hispano Chamber of Hob Commerce of Hobbs. Las Cruces, where um, I believe it's the U.S. Bank building that we're in Las Cruces. In Rio Rancho, we're housed within the Rio Rancho Regional Chamber of Commerce. In Roswell, we're in another older bank building. And in Santa Fe, we're part of the incubator um, there in Santa Fe. Our West Enterprise Center in Albuquerque is a 37,000 square foot building that um, the main focus is to have um, businesses incubate. Um, and just like a little chick egg, these businesses aren't quite ready to go out into the world and defend themselves. And so we provide an environment where they can um, stabilize and grow. Uh, they're partnered with a business consultant um, and are put on a track for growth um, to the point where we can graduate them out of the program and they can go buy or build their own building. They get um, very, very low rent and again, a, a wraparound of services to really help that business grow until they can purchase or build their own space. Our Comcast Digital Media Studio features an, a 180 degree cyclorama green screen. Um, and so we can use the green screen. We can also go um, on site. We've got 6K and 8K quality cameras um, where we can shoot um, the very best video. Um, Netflix has used our studio. Disney has rented our studio for months at a time um, because of the technology we have in there. We now have Tom Reagan, who's our studio manager. He was a documentarian out in New York. And this is just another service that we offer to our small businesses. Our business training is very, um, can be very in depth or it can be um, you know, very just informational on a surface level. We know that the best learning um, can typically be done in consultation. And so the, the business training is really a much surface level um, topics um, and conversations so that we can impulse having one-on-one -on -one conversations to help our businesses grow. And it feeds into consulting. We have uh, teams of consultants in every single region um, with a, a variety of backgrounds and expertise. Um, not, not everybody at West knows everything, but uh, collectively we believe in the uh, wisdom of crowds. Um, and so if we don't have the information on hand, we know where to get it or there's someone on the team that does know it. Um, our training and consulting right now um, is um, at no cost. Uh, we, we were able to secure grants and donation to offer them at no cost. Prior to the pandemic, we were charging $30 an hour for consultations, and our training was anywhere from $5 a training to $300 a training, depending on the content. Uh, one of the silver linings of the pandemic is that we went virtual. And so now someone sitting in Las Cruces can attend training that's being offered in Farmington and vice versa. Um, and so you can attend any one of our great trainings right now at no cost. Um, this is um, going to be proceeding um, into the foreseeable future. We're doing our very best to continue to raise funds to offer these classes at no cost. Um, and same with the consultations. We can, we can consult with you as often as is necessary and useful for your business. If you just want someone to bounce ideas off of and check in, we can do that. If you need someone to sit with you and hold your hand through a process, we are also happy to do that. Um, we offer services in multiple different languages. Um, and where we have a, a language need um, that someone on the team doesn't speak, we will hire an interpreter um, and, and a translator to help us uh, deliver our services. Today, uh, we're talking about the basics of borrowing. Um, I am a recovering banker. I spent uh, over 10 years working in different banks, credit unions, and commercial lending. Um, and so we're going to go over the five C's of credit. Um, this will make more sense here in just a moment. The five C's of credit are a way that the banks um, and credit unions look at lending and how to qualify someone for a loan. I'm going to give you the perspective from the bank side and then the perspective from the nonprofit lender side. Okay. We're going to do an overview of our, of our West loan program and then we'll have that Q&A session at the end. But a reminder, if anything does come up, um, please use that Q&A box um, and um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be able to address it at, as we're going through. So the five C's of credit. Um, like I said, this is the way, this is a simplification of a, the way that loans and uh, that um, banks and credit unions look at qualifying an applicant for a loan and determining their risk, determining if it makes sense for the bank and if it makes sense for the borrower. We're going to go over each one of these in detail. And like I said, I'm going to give you the perspective from what the bank considers under these um, titles and what um, nonprofit lenders consider under these titles. So the first C is capital. Capital can be said as your skin in the game or your down payment. How much of your own money 
um, are you putting into whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, right? So after you've completed an application, you've provided all sorts of uh, paperwork to the bank, you've answered question, an underwriter or a risk analyst takes, you know, sits down with everyone and takes a look at it. And the first thing that they consider is, okay, they're asking for this amount of money to purchase this thing or accomplish this goal. How much of their own money have they invested? Um, and so if you think in terms of like a car, uh, car loan, um, typically they ask for a down payment. It's your skin in the game. It's how serious it, it shows how serious you are and how committed you, you are to this um, goal. Um, it's not common that banks like to do 100% financing. Um, in that sense, there's not a whole lot of risk for the borrower um, because you haven't put any of your own money forth. The more of your own money that you put forth, um, the better that it looks like um, uh, for the borrower. So I've got a, uh, my office assistant here. Give me just a second. You. And so the, the skin in the game is really a measure of commitment and how serious you are. How much of your own fundraising have you done? And are you asking the bank to cover the whole thing or just make up the difference of what you need? One of the financial ratios that's run is the debt to equity ratio. They're going to take a look at what debt the business has versus the equity that you have in the business. The equity is what portion belongs to the owner, the actual um, um, ownership part of it, is, um, and they're going to take a look at um, the financial condition of the business based on this. Um, the, the capital will also help them determine the financial strength of the business and the borrower. Um, and so the five C's of credit can apply on the personal end, on the business end, and on both. Um, some banks offer commercial loans or loans for businesses, but they require um, they require the individuals, the owners of the, um, the, the vested people into the business to also provide the five C's of credit on their personal end. Other banks only look at the business five C's of credit and other organizations only look at the five C's of credit on the personal end. And so all of these things can apply on the personal, the business end or on both depending on the organization you're looking at. Um, and so that's what the bank looks at it for um, nonprofits, um, it's very, very similar. They also want to see some amount of skin in the game. There are nonprofits that are willing to finance 100% of a venture. Um, and they look at, um, they will also look at how much money you will be reinvesting in the business down the road. So even though you may be coming with very little or nothing, um, through, through a cash flow projection, if, if the nonprofits are seeing that you, you are reinvesting money, you're not just extracting um, extracting money from the business, but reinvesting to continue to build, that does show on a positive end. Capacity. Um, so this, the bank looks at the, the second C of capacity is your ability to repay. This can be determined by um, your personal taxes, uh, your business taxes for the last couple of years, uh, a cash flow, um, which um, a cash flow can be prepared um, backwards on looking at the, the reality, a visualization of the money that came in and out of a business. And oftentimes they'll ask you to prepare what's called a pro forma cash flow, which is looking into the future, how the loan will impact the business. So we will see in, in a pro forma in a future cash flow projection is another name for it, is taking a look at, okay, we will see where the loan came in. They got an, uh, an infusion of cash we see where the loan payment starts and money is coming out, how does this impact the rest of the business? Is it really helping them start, stabilize or grow? Um, this is pretty uniform on both um, the bank side and the credit union side and the nonprofit side. The requirements within, um, within these um, bullet points is gonna be different at every organization. And typically um, nonprofits are the most flexible or, um, or the most forgiving when it comes to what the cash flow looks like. Um, another thing that they're going to look at in capacity is your debt coverage. Do you have enough um, assets and equity into the business to cover debts if they needed to be covered immediately? Um, another ratio that they run is called DTI, your debt to income. So they take a look at all of the debts on the personal and business end or individually, and they, they compare it um, to the revenues or the income that the business is making, and that will give them a percentage. Um, the lower uh, that percentage is, uh, the better uh, the better position the borrower is to take on that additional risk. And um, every bank and credit union has a different limit. Some places it depends on your credit score, which we'll talk about here in just a second. The better your credit score, the more risk that the bank is willing to take. Um, the better your credit history, the more risk you're willing to take. So. Um, 
to take out of this is, you know, if you have uh, impacted credit or your credit isn't the best, understand that banks and credit unions are going to be very weary to let you borrow beyond a certain amount of what your monthly income looks like. Um, at West um, and at other nonprofits, um, your cash flow helps us determine the financial situation, but it isn't the sole determining factor. Um, I have seen loans done for businesses and people that had a negative cash flow. Negative cash flow basically means you have more bills and expenses than money you're making. But that's that may be the reason you're seeking a loan. Maybe the loan will help you accomplish something um, or buy a piece of equipment, hire people to help your cash flow be positive. Positive cash flow indicates that you are making more money than you're spending. Um, positive cash flow is exactly why people go into business. Um, I always joke that if you have a business that isn't paying you um, and it sits like that for a while and you're okay with it, you have a hobby and not a business. And our job at West is to help you build a strong and sustainable business. And the cash flow is one of the most important tools for that. Um, over the last 30 years, um, there are statistics that show that cash flow is one of the top five reasons businesses fail. And 86% of 84% of businesses that have failed in the last 30 years um, have failed because of improper cash flow management. And so this is a very big topic of conversation here at West. We offer tons of training and consulting around managing your cash flow. Um, and getting a loan is a really good sign, um, or the ability to get a loan, I should say, is a really good sign of the financial health of your business. And so we really do um, structure our consultations around, around cash flow. Character. This is a touchy subject uh, in the lending world of today. So there's a lot of banks that talk about where, you know, we do character lending and a lot of nonprofits that even say character lending. And character is a measure of your responsibility. What they're taking a look at is at the banks and credit unions and some nonprofit borrowers, they're taking a look at your credit score. Oftentimes, um, they want to see really good credit scores and good credit scores right now are looking at about uh, 720. Some banks, credit unions and other nonprofit lenders have a minimum credit score where they will not consider you for a loan unless your credit is above a certain point. The average number for a minimum credit score at some of these organizations is 670. And so if you've got a 669, um, it is very likely that they will not consider you past that point. It's an automatic decline. Um, and so that's the credit score end of it. The other thing that they look at is your credit report so that they can see your payment history and establish a pattern of positive payment history. Does this person pay their debts? Do they pay on time? Do they have any history of missing payments um, or collections? Uh, another thing that they look at is credit utilization. Is this a person that abuses their credit cards um, or something happened in their life that made them max out their credit cards and take out a lot of loans? Um, you know, the credit, um, the word credit comes from the Latin for I believe. Um, and what, what the United States has established with this credit system is a, is a way for lenders to believe that they will receive their payment back. And so um, another thing that can discredit you is to have a bankruptcy on your credit report. It doesn't eliminate you entirely. Bankruptcies um, carry a lot of um, mysticism around them and uh, kind of a taboo topic. The bankruptcy system uh, is a tool um, that helps people get out, of, um, get out of trouble and get out of debt. Um, and so some lenders um, look at bankruptcy very negatively and won't consider you if you have a, a bankruptcy on record. Other lenders will take a look at your bankruptcy and see what you've done since your bankruptcy. Okay, we understand they got them, there was something happened in their life um, that caused them to get into this financial predicament. Um, the bankruptcy has been resolved. What have they done since then um, to prove that responsibility? They also look at credit references on the business and on personal end. Business credit is very different from personal credit, but it establishes the same thing. How responsible is this person with their finances and um, are they the type of person that pays back? Um, and so that's what the banks and credit unions. I can tell you that a lot of, that some nonprofit lenders don't have a minimum credit score and West is one of them. Um, we don't have a minimum credit score to approve. Um, we work with lots of people that um, have impacted credit, that have um, bankruptcies on their record. Um, we are a member of the Credit Builders Alliance. And as such, um, we have members on our team that are nationally certified master credit coaches. This is a service we offer to, for free to any one of our clients, whether they're participating in the loan program or not. Um, and we put together credit plans and help people really, really improve their credit. Credit is something that's starting to rule our world. As things get digitized, you can't get a job at some places without having a good credit report. You can't get an apartment complex 
Um, cell phone companies may require you to put a deposit or won't finance a phone for you. Same thing with um, uh, utility companies. They won't, uh, they, they require a deposit if you've got bad credit. And so this is continuing to kind of rule our world. Um, and the importance of it um, isn't lost on West. And for that reason, like I said, we offer our, our credit coaching. On that credit score portion of it, this is something that I love to teach people and talk about because we don't learn it in school. A lot of us have to learn it the hard way. I'm definitely one of them. I'm lucky enough to have grown up in banking, um, but despite that, I still made a lot of mistakes in my credit. Um, and I had to learn, um, like I said, through the banks and, and the hard way, what really goes into a credit score. Um, and so the credit score, you may have seen it, um, it, it runs um, depending on which credit system you're looking at. Um, from the three and four hundreds up until the you know eight hundreds, um, and every, all of us fall somewhere in between there. Um, it is constantly changing, but the big factors that are going into it is thirty five percent of what makes up your your credit score is your payment history. Um, how positive your payment history is. Missing a payment by a couple of days is not going to impact your credit history, but if you are more than thirty days late, that will impact your credit history, and that makes up thirty five percent of what's considered in your score. 30% of the amounts owed. How big are the loans you're getting? What's your, um, the limit on your credit card and how much of that limit are you using? The length of your history, the older the credit, the more, the, the, the more history you have to prove that you are a responsible person with your money and your, and your credit. Um, and so 15% of what goes into a score is the length of your history. Um, 10% is new credit or the age of your credit, uh, the age of individual credit lines and how new they are. And then types of credit. Um, this is one that confounds a lot of people, types of credit. So there are different types of credit that can be reported on your credit report. There is um, um, mortgages, credit cards, um, closed end credits like auto loans and personal loans um, and um, revolving credit, student loans, all of these things, the more diverse credit you have, the better it is. If you only have credit cards um, and you have a really positive payment history, it's, a, it's, it's possible to have a good credit score. Your credit score would even be better if you diversified it and had um, a car loan, a mortgage, a closed end note. Um, we're not gonna dive super deep into this because we've got uh, uh, an 18 hour series of classes around this topic that I'll invite you to sign up for. The next C is conditions. This one looks very different at different organizations. Conditions can be what purpose does this loan serve? What is it going to be used for? Are they using it for operating capital to pay for employees? Are they using it to buy equipment um, to improve their services? Um, are they using it to, to, um, to buy materials that they need for a project that they've already been awarded? Um, the purpose is something that's, that's very specially considered uh, in the loan world because they wanna make sure that the loan does help your business thrive. Um, many banks and bar lenders are very weary of giving you a loan to survive. Uh, you know, I got my business into some trouble, something happened, uh, I need this money to survive. That purpose is a very scary purpose for lenders because um, they're gonna be looking at, okay, is this person taking additional debt and slowing down the eventual close of the business or is this loan really gonna help them turn things around and get them on the positive end? Another thing that's considered is economic conditions. Are you opening, um, are you opening a, an event center in the middle of a pandemic? That probably isn't a good idea. Um, are you opening um, a gas station um, on a highway that's gonna be built? That's a very good con economic condition. Competition, are you opening a sandwich shop where there are in a shopping center where there are five other sandwich shops? Um, and so they're going to take a look at the business plan sometimes or just the overall economic conditions and competitions and see what's available um, and what makes sense for this loan. They're also going to take a look at supplier and customer relations. Um, this can go into the business credit score, um, but they're going to take a look at is this a person that plays that pays their suppliers? What kind of customer relations they get into? Are we lending money to someone that has negative supplier relations? Um, or are customers really upset with this business and they're just not happy with the quality of service? They'll look at product differentiation. Are you opening something that looks and feels identical to everybody else um, and, the, and you're not creating competition? Um, another thing that's considered in condition are the interest rates that are being offered and the terms. How long are we going to pay this back? What's the payment going to be like? And does it make sense um, to offer um, to offer this loan to this person or is it going to cripple them um, and encumber the business in a negative manner? Collateral, this is one of the touchiest subjects and one of the most difficult here in New Mexico. 
Um, in New Mexico, not everybody has $50,000 of collateral available um, to, to support a loan. Um, and so collateral helps the lender guarantee that they're going to be able to receive their money back. Um, if they should, if the person fails to perform on the loan, if they stop paying or they're not paying on time or they violate some of the condition of the loan, the collateral agreement allows the lender to repossess that collateral and sell it to recoup their funds. Sometimes collateral takes um, the, on the, the site of um, commercial property, um, inventory, um, stocks, um, vehicles. Um, different things like that. And like I said, it offers assurance that the bar, that the lender is going to be able to recoup their money should they fail to perform. Typically, the collateral should match the loan type. You're not going to use a car as collateral to buy a building. They're going to want to use the building to buy, as collateral to buy the building, and they're going to want to use the car as collateral to buy the car. Um, one of the ratios that's run here is the loan to value ratio. And what they look at is the value of the collateral versus the loan. It's very unlikely that you're going to get a $10,000 loan for a $2,000 car. Um, and so they, different lenders are going to have different guidelines as to where that loan to value has to be. And it's a percentage. And the difference is that down payment that we talked about on the capital side. This is your skin in the game. Some places like mortgage, um, they'll say, you know, we can only lend up to 80% of the value of the home. And that 20% is going to have to be made up by either someone else's loan um, or a down payment in cash from the borrower. Um, and loan to values are, are very different depending on um, what is being purchased. Um, typically, like we've talked about, the better the credit, uh, the weaker the collateral can be. Um, so the more trustworthy you demonstrate you are by your credit score and your credit history, the more flexibility that lenders are willing to have on the collateral. Um, I, every organization I've ever worked for that had a loan program takes a look at the entire picture. And so they, they can address weak spots in the application with strengths. And typically, the stronger your credit is, the weaker other things can be. And um, one of the things that they're going to look at is what, what happens with the difference after sell-off. So if I've got a mortgage or a commercial mortgage, um, and I, for whatever reason, my business fails and they have to repossess my building, um, there can be a difference after the sell-off. Maybe it wasn't worth as much, the conditions and the economy changed, and so I still owe money afterwards. I'm still responsible for that money. Or it could be the opposite end. Um, maybe the, the value, or I paid off enough of the loan, and so the value of the building, sorry, give me just a second. The, the difference after sell-off can also be on the positive end, where the value of the building is worth more than what's left after the loan. The bank doesn't get to keep that difference. They only get to pay off what's owed on the loan, and that difference comes back to me as the owner. Hopefully, none of you ever get into that situation, but just providing some clarification on what can happen if collateral is seized, sold, um, and there's a difference on the positive or the negative end after, after selling um, the collateral. I'll stop real fast and check the Q&A, see if anything doesn't look like there's any questions. All right, and I've got a couple slides coming up that probably aren't gonna make any sense. I've got uh, two llamas or two alpacas. I've got an emu. I've got an old car on blocks. I've got a yard sale full of, full of personal belongings. The reason I've got these items is because this is what West has accepted as collateral in the past. Um, these are very real examples of items that we currently have on collateral. We currently have a herd of alpacas on collateral um, for, for a business. We have a flock of emus on collateral that we've valued. Um, and we filed a, a, a statement with the state indicating that if the business goes under, they fail to pay, we will repossess these emus and sell them on the market uh, to try and recoup our funds. We have old cars that don't work, but um, they have some sort of value, and so we've used them as collateral. And we've got personal belongings. I've got an LG mini split air conditioner. I've got um, jewelry on collateral. I've got uh, old laptops, bedroom furniture, stained glass windows on collateral. West Loan Program exists to be a no barriers approach to accessing capital. We don't think that in um, one of the most economically challenged states in the country, 
that collateral should be a barrier to accessing capital for a small business. Let's talk about something in the QA. Uh, will we have access to this presentation after completed so I can share with my spouse? Yes, we will be sharing the presentation. Um, and so collateral is not an issue at, is it, we, we try to make collateral not be an issue at West. We do collateralize our loans. Our definition of collateral is very flexible. Um, and we work with our borrowers to come up with something that really does make sense for them. Um, our loan program started in 1991. It was created from scratch from um, the person that I replaced, uh, the vice president of lending, Kim Bluer. Kim Bluer was a commercial lender in the late 80s. She's a UNM graduate. Um, and when West started, um, she was invited to come over and help us build this loan program from scratch. And so our loan program started with a $50,000 loan that West took out and we relent that money out to borrowers um, at a very low interest rate, absorbing the difference in cost to help them start stabilize or grow a business. West has been doing loans longer than the SBA has been doing their microloan program. When the SBA launched their microloan program, West was um, in the first batch of people that were approved because we had already met all of the conditions and requirements of the, um, of the SBA's microloan program. Um, since the early 90s, we now have a portfolio of, of millions of dollars that were available to lend. Uh, we are still a very small loan program, but because people believe in our system of training and consulting, they've donated money to our loan program so that we can issue loans. To date, we've, to date since we started our loan program, we've lent over $10.3 million within the state of New Mexico for people to start, stabilize, or grow their business. Our loan program exists to support the training and consulting focus of West. If the only thing you need for your business is money, we're not the organization for you. But if you need access to capital, if you need money and you need coaching and you need consulting and you need training for your business, we're the place for you. We know and statistics show that giving a business money without supporting that use of money and giving them all the tools and resources they need to succeed that that business is likely to be in a worse financial position than they were before accessing the capital. And so for that reason, we're very deliberate and particular about who we lend to. We want people that are coachable. We want people that want to start stabilize or grow their business in a very realistic manner. Um, at West, we have made millionaires before. We have helped people turn their business into um, a, a million dollar enterprise, but that's not really our focus. Those are few and far between. Our goal is to help people make their first dollar, help people put food on the table and support their families and communities around New Mexico, and to create something that will help them build, build wealth and whatever that means for them. Um, I've had the, the great honor and pleasure of launching our Hope Loan program. And I'm gonna ask um, everybody on the class to pay very close attention because this program um, tends to perk ears up, but I wanna be very, very particular about the way that I deliver this information. Our HOPE Loan Program stands for Helping Open Possibilities for Everyone. This program started in 2020 when we received seed money in the amount of $250,000 from Wells Fargo. They gave us $250,000 to start this loan program. Since then, it's grown to almost a million dollars um, from private donors. Um, this program is targeted towards New Mexicans who are most in need. And so this program exists as a safety net to our traditional loan program. Okay. The HOPE loan program offers loans at 0% interest. There are no loan fees, application fees, closing fees, processing fees. A person will not pay anything to access this money. Up to 50% of the loan can be forgivable in the form of a grant. Okay. This is a very exciting loan program. It's 0% interest, 0% loan fees. We can earn up to half of the back. The biggest, the, the, one of the most important parts of this is there are income limits. Not everybody qualifies for a HOPE loan. Um, we don't even have people apply for a HOPE loan. People apply for a traditional loan program. And once we have a completed loan application, the loan department determines if it makes sense to put them into the HOPE program. So this has very specific income limits. This is designed for New Mexicans who are low income and low wealth. Um, we've set up a system of guidelines to help us determine whether a person qualifies for this. Um, and this program, like I said, is the ultimate version of our no barriers approach to accessing capital. And so what will happen, what can happen is our loan program offers loans from 500 to $50,000. 
a person can access 50, up to $50,000. And if they pay the loan back over five years and complete technical assistance requirements, at the end of the loan, they will receive a check for up to $25,000 back to their business as a grant that they can do whatever they choose to. Um, and that, that, that money belongs to the business and it is up to them what, what they do with that money. And so we organically have grown this program. We very, very rarely promote this program. Um, this information isn't available on our website because people lock into it's a free loan and I get half of it back and that's all they hear. Um, but this program, I wanna reiterate, it is for low income, low wealth New Mexicans, and those limits are determined, uh, have been determined by West and we will let someone know if they qualify for the HOPE loan program. Um, I'll stop real fast. It looks like there's something in the Q&A. What are the income guidelines? Anna, if you're interested, um, there will be some information at the end. You can fill out a loan inquiry and we can have a conversation um, about um, our income guidelines. I'm going to get into the different kinds of loan that exist um, so that you understand what it is that you're going to be asking for once you determine that you need capital. So the first and most common is a secured loan. This secured loan is a closed end note, which means you borrow an amount of money. The bank credit union or nonprofit tells you how long you have to pay it back and you pay it back and that's the end of the loan. Okay, you don't have access to those funds again. It's not like a credit card or a line of credit. And the most important part that distinguishes this kind of loan is that it, it is secured, which means it has um, collateral. You have to use a home, a building, equipment, inventory, vehicles to secure the loan. Typically secured loans have lower interest rates because they're lower risk. They're lower risk because they have collateral. Um, and so if you have collateral, borrowers feel much better that they're gonna get their money back one way or another. You're either gonna pay them back or they're gonna sell your equipment or collateral um, to get their money back. And so examples of secured loans are home loans, car loans, and equipment loans. You use those items as collateral to secure the loan. They set a term of one, two, three, four, five, six years. You pay it back at the end of it. They release that collateral to you. It becomes your property. Um, and the relationship uh, on the loan ends. Um, it's very important to understand that defaulting on a loan results in repossession. Default in the common sense typically means failing to pay back. But um, having worked with so many sets of loan documents, I can tell you default looks very different anywhere you, anywhere you go. Um, it, default means you broke one of the conditions of the loan, one of the rules of the loan. And so if one of the rules of the loan is that every, every three months you have to send in your financial statements to the bank and you fail to send in those financial statements, regardless of the fact that you've been paying on month, month to month and on time every month, um, they can consider you in default because you have violated one of the rules. And so another thing that we do at West is we help you interpret and understand contracts and documents that you've signed. If you currently have a business loan or you're considering a business loan and you need help dissecting the information that's in the contract, you can bring it to us and we will help you put it in layman's term in plain English so you understand what it is you're signing. The next kind of loan is an unsecured loan. This is different from a secured loan because this is a signature loan. They're signing, you're signing with your signature and that's all they have as a guarantee is your word. Um, these are higher interest rates because they're higher risk. They have nothing to collect on. A, um, a personal loan is an example of a signature loan. If you don't pay on that, all they can do is send you to collections and harass you and hope that you'll pay them back. Um, at that point, there's nothing that they can really go after because it's unsecured. Payday loans are an example of unsecured loans. Um, and this is an example of what, what we call predatory lending. Um, they're payday, uh, unsecured loans are typically very fast loans with very high interest rates. And they're targeted towards people that, that need that money urgently. They're in an emergency or they're um, um, about to face a crisis. Um, and so people will sign um, an unsecured loan at a high interest rate because they need those funds. Lines of credit. Um, lines of credit are known as, what, or as what's known as revolving debt. And so unlike a closed end note where you pay back for a certain amount of time and that's the end of it, revolving as you pay back, that those funds become available for you to borrow again. Um, lines of credit, can, uh, an example of lines of credit are credit cards. 
Um, every month you make you use your credit card, you pay your credit card off, that balance is there and available for you to use again. Um, lines of credit also exist without having a physical card. Many banks and commercial banks offer lines of credit on the personal end and on the business end. At West, we do have lines of credit. Um, our lines of credit are only offered to existing loan borrowers, people that have uh, had a traditional note that we've got a very long standing and good relationship with. We'll open them up a line of credit so that they can continue to access funds as they need without having to go through the entire application process again. Um, the important difference between, uh, in addition to the revolving aspect of a line of credit is compounding interest. So on a closed end note or a traditional note, your interest rate is determined um, and it only builds on the principal balance. You're only paying interest on what you owe. On lines of credit, this is a much worse way of paying loans back because you pay interest on interest and principal. And so interest will build on itself. And so this is an important and useful tool, but it's very easy to get yourself in trouble. Um, credit card companies and lines of credit companies offer what's called a minimum payment which as long as you pay us this, we're gonna be satisfied. Those minimum payments are designed to maximize the amount of money that these lenders make. They want you to pay back as slow as possible so that the interest continues to rack up. And even when you get a large sum of money to pay it off, your principal balance hasn't been reduced. Um, and so I'm sure you've seen on commercials or on social media or um, uh, you know, through whatever channel of um, media consumption you have, um, you know, how easy it is for people to get themselves in credit card debt and how long it will take them to pay it back. Um, another thing that we do is debt management here at West. And so we can help you um, take a look at your, your current existing debt situation and help you come up with a plan to pay it back um, with whatever your goal is, whether it's saving the most amount of money or reducing your monthly payments. Uh, we can take a look at that for you and make it happen. Um, that's the end of the presentation. Um, I'm gonna open it up to question and answers. Um, I'd invite you to follow us on any one of these social media channels. Um, and I wanna to introduce to you our loan team. So uh, let me pull out my little laser pointer here. So we've got Madai Chavez, who is our loan assistant. Um, Madai helps us um, administer the loan program. She is our paperwork queen. She prepares the loan documents, makes sure everybody's payments on time. After you get a loan, she's our primary point of contact for people that need to service their loan. Um, she comes from the credit union world uh, where she was a consumer underwriter. Um, and now, like I said, she helps us administer our loan program. Then we have our loan operations officer, Melissa Toland Williams. Melissa um, has um, her degree in international business. She um, was our previous loan administrator for about eight years and is now our principal underwriter. And so she works with borrowers very closely to help them prepare loan packages. Adriana is our Money Learning Lab program manager. She's in charge of all of our financial education training. Um, and so she travels all around the state of New Mexico delivering financial capability training on both the personal end and the business end. And um, you've already been putting up with me all day. I'm the vice president of lending. I get to oversee the loan program and the financial education that Wes does. Um, and um, like I said at the beginning, I'm a recovering banker. Um, I am super passionate about the work that we do here and helping people um, access and understand uh, what it is they do. Um, and that's it. Very last slide I've got for you, Oop, if it'll work. Um, I invite you to work with us if you are thinking about starting a business, if um, you are already in business, if you had a business, you think about restarting it, um, come, come have a conversation with us, sign up for our training, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. If you're interested in, in, in getting a loan, um, whether it be here or at other organization, um, please come speak with us. We are a non-competitive lender. Like I said at the beginning, we're an SBA resource partner. And so if there's another organization or bank that you're looking to get capital at, we will happily help you apply for that program. You don't have to use our loans. Our goal is to put money in your hands when you need it most and help you make the most of it. And so if there's another uh, program that you're interested in, we can help guide you through that program and help you put together the very best loan um, package. Much like the SBDC, we help people with their business planning, with their financial projections. Uh, we work hand in hand. We are not in competition with each other. Um, and we're gonna be working towards doing co-consultation so that you can have 
um, resources from, from both organizations really support the start, stabilization, or growing of your business. So we've got our website, www.west.com um, or west.org. Our contact information is 246-6900 for our main line. And um, we also have a client directory. All of our clients are encouraged to sign up for the client directory and many of our clients use each other's services um, because it creates a really good and strong ecosystem. And uh, that's you know everything that we're about. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then jump into the Q&A. Would you like me to read it to you? Uh, yeah, go for it. I'm trying to switch screens. Sure. From Terry, she says, who do we contact for the credit repair? Um, so that would be the loan department um, under the on the website. Actually, let me pull up the website so I can kind of show you how to navigate it. And we also have a request to see your social media profiles. Is the website up? Can you see it? We can. Perfect. All right. So this is the home page. If you go under programs and you go to lending, you can uh, schedule a consultation in English or Spanish. Oh, that's one thing I failed to mention. 100% of my loan team is bilingual um, in English and Spanish. Um, and if there's other language needs, we will, we will hire an interpreter or translator to join us in the consultation and help us. Um, but uh, you can schedule an introduction to the West Loan Program. Um, if you want to meet specifically with myself, Melissa, or Madai, you can use um, that schedule a meeting, and that will take you directly to our calendar. And so you can schedule a consultation, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, English or Spanish. Um, and um, you can also schedule um, credit coaching. And so we will pull your credit report for free. You will get a copy of it. Um, and we will help you put together a credit plan um, to, to achieve whatever goal it is, whether it's um, establishing, building, or rebuilding your credit. We've got strategies for all of that. All of that is at no cost to you. And oh, you, you can also use our loan program to build credit. So on top of all the legitimate business expenses um, that you would need a small business loan for, our small, our, our small business loans um, can also be used um, to build, rebuild, or repair their credit. And I'm um, sorry, what was the second question? The second question is how quickly are your loans, are loans approved by your team from Bill? He is our advisor in, uh, at San Juan College. Um, there, there, there is no timeline. Every borrower is different. Um, like I said um, early on in the presentation, we're all about training and consulting. And so we have people that come to us and don't have a business plan together. Um, that person is going to take significantly longer to get approved for our loan program because we're going to help them put together their business plan as opposed to someone that comes to us with everything already ready. Um, and so there are borrowers that we that, that took eight months to put together a loan package and got approved. There are other borrowers that um, took a week um, to get approved. Um, and so our loans, and, and this is going to sound, um, this is going to sound really amorphous, but our loans take as long as they have to as long as it takes to put this person into a better financial situation and get them off on the right foot, uh, whether that's through cash flow consultation, credit coaching, or small business plan building, um, our loans take as long as, as long as they have to. If you're looking for quick money, we're not the organization for you. Um, if you're looking to learn and build a strong and sustainable business and access capital, then, uh, that's where we step in. Perfect. Uh, next question. Can you please uh, put the slide up with all your social media platforms? Yeah, let me pull up the presentation one more time. And our participant has their hand up. I'm going to open it up to everybody. If you want to ask a question instead of typing one in, please put your hand up for me and I'll be happy to uh, open up your microphone. Perfect. Thank you. You all you do all of them, don't you? Yeah, pretty active. We've got some videos that we just launched. Um, that you'll see there's a new one releasing tomorrow that we did in our Comcast Digital Media Studio about the Money Learning Lab, which is all about our financial capability training. And then you said you opened up someone's mic to ask a question? I was. They put their hand down, so I'm guessing. Oh, okay. But I open, uh, you know, it's available to anybody who wants to ask a question. You could also type it in. 
while we wait for questions, I was going to ask you, did you mention the collateral assistance program? I have not mentioned the collateral assistance program. So one of the one of the programs that's available to New Mexicans um, is called the New Mexico Collateral Assistance Program. This program was started during the Obama administration where President Obama set apart uh, billions of dollars for states to use to help small businesses access collateral. And so uh, one of the things I was saying earlier was that not everybody in New Mexico is just sitting on a bunch of uh, tens of thousands of dollars of collateral. The collateral assistance program really helps step in um, to cover the difference. And so the collateral assistance program of New Mexico allows borrowers to access up to $250,000 to collateralize their loan. It will only cover up to 50% of your loan. And so if you have a $10,000 loan that you need to collateralize, the collateral assistance program will help you access up to 5,000. Um, they have a very special focus on women, black, indigenous, people of color, immigrants, refugees, um, the formerly incarcerated, and anybody that the traditional system isn't set up for. Um, and so West was the first participant in this program. Um, and we continue to use this program to help our borrowers reach, um, reach that finish line and access capital and, and get their business going. The way that the program works is you first have to be approved by the primary lender. And so when borrowers come to us and we're gonna use the collateral assistance program, we put them through our process. If we approve them, then West is applying on behalf of the borrower to the state of New Mexico, requesting to access those funds. Um, the New Mexico collateral assistance program will then review the case with their approval committee um, and decide to approve or decline the loan. They'll um, move that money over into a special uh, type of account and should the borrower default in any way, um, the lender has the ability to use that collateral to cover the loan. Um, so again, it's up to $250,000 and up to 50% of the amount being borrowed. You have to be approved through a lender first, and then that lender applies on your behalf to the state and the state may approve or decline um, that, that request. Perfect, thank you. I don't think, uh, the, all I have is Beanie Babies and Pokemon cards, Sandro. So I think that- Hey, <laughs> if, if, if you can get an insurance policy on them, we will use them as collateral. We, I've got, like I said, I've got some really strange things on collateral right now. Um, I joked with you yesterday that our loans would give a banker nightmares and diarrhea, but we have a very low delinquency rate because of the relationship we build in our training and consulting. Um, we work with borrowers very closely and make sure that their business is performing the way that they want it to, mm -hmm. not only so that they can pay us back, but so that the business is paying them and they're building wealth for themselves and their families. Perfect. Did you, I know you guys do a lot of uh, webinars and online uh, um, learning. Yeah, we have uh, tons of training and I'll pull up our website to show you what that looks like. Perfect. Um, can you, is the website showing? Yes. All righty. So we're going to go back to the homepage. From our homepage, um, if you go to pro, I'm oh, sorry, to training, you can see all of our upcoming training. Like I said, we do business planning, strategic planning, marketing, web marketing, social media marketing, HR management, financial planning and analysis. Um, this is included, but not limited to. We have so many different kinds of training all across the state. If you click on see upcoming trainings, you can see we typically have 60 to 90 days of training already scheduled out. And so um, today at 12 p.m., you can join our training from Hobbs. that's how to develop a marketing plan. Um, our Farmington office is business planning for indigenous women entrepreneurs. The Go Latinas event is going on, um, ways to increase cash flow creative ways to drive traffic to your website. Uh, we've got training in Spanish. We've got what's called the Credit Builder Bootcamp coming up in Spanish, uh, where um, it's a very intensive training and loan program to help uh, build, rebuild, or establish credit. Um, tons of networking events. Women are terrific. Um, improving your customer relationships. Uh, training specifically for people in the beauty industry social media basics. Um, there's, I mean, there's no end to the kinds of topics we cover. If there's a training that you don't see that you would really like, please let us know. We are constantly developing new training um, and we can, um, we are happy to put together something um, or hire professionals from New Mexico to come in and teach classes for us. 
Perfect. So you can click on register and sign up for it. Like I said, all of our training right now is at no cost. Um, it is offered uh, virtually and hybrid. Um, so you can attend typically uh, via, via Zoom. Um, some of our trainings do offer an in-person component, um, but all of our trainings definitely have the online component. Perfect. We have two more questions. I think we have time for the two more left. First from Rebecca, can a loan inquiry be emailed to us? The loan inquiry um, is not like a form necessarily that you fill out. Um, go to our website and request an, request one of those appointments. And then we have the conversation with you and start putting together the loan application with you. Sandro, can you chat out the link to the, that area? Yeah, let me uh, pull it up here. All right, in the chat, you have the link to schedule an appointment with the loan department if you are interested in pursuing, um, in pursuing a business loan. Thank you. And then Anna, you had a question, you could go ahead and speak. I do, I do. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I think you already answered this, but I just wanna make sure, and, and um, I'm pretty sure I had already asked this before um, in another training, but I currently have a business consultant that I am working with through the SBA. There is there like a conflict of interest to be involved with both? No, we are both funded by the same organization. Uh, we're resource partners, um, and so there's no conflict of interest. We work together. Okay, perfect. So I'll, I'll probably schedule a consultation, and that should be fine then. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sandro, can you talk about SBA loans and kind of how they work from your end? Because I think people uh, um, have the idea that they get the loans directly from the SBA. That's, uh, that's a great question. So SBA, um, the Small Business Administration is um, part of the federal government um, that's created to really support small and micro businesses. Um, and part of that support system that they offer includes loan programs. There are several loan programs for different purposes, but the loan, you don't receive the loan directly from the SBA. What happens is there are intermediaries like West. And so one of, well, part of our loan program is the microloan program. And so the SBA lends us money and we make payments on that, um, on that loan and pay interest on it. We take that money and relend it out to borrowers. And so you may hear things like seven SBA 7A, SBA 504, SBA microloan. Those are all different programs, but all loan programs um, administered by the SBA. Um, but you have to work with an intermediary. And so you're never going to apply directly to the SBA and work directly with an SBA loan officer. Um, they establish organizations um, like West to help them manage these programs. And so it's, um, it will either be guaranteed or, or, or funded by the SBA, but you'll work directly with your intermediary um, to pay the loan back, um, to do loan workouts um, for the application, the underwriting, and any follow-up. Um, each one of those programs has different limits and requirements. And so the only SBA program that West offers is the SBA microloan program. That program allows us to lend anywhere from $500 to $50,000 for any legitimate business purpose. Legitimate business purposes include working capital, um, to pay rent or to pay payroll. Um, it can include inventory, equipment, machinery. Um, it can include marketing. So if you need to um, put together a marketing plan and that marketing plan requires you to spend money through Facebook ads or building a website, um, you can use it for technology. Um, so if you need to buy a point of sale system to accept credit cards or install Wi-Fi in your building, um, or buy laptops or computers for your building, it can be used for that. Um, anything that's legitimately a business purpose that will help your business start, stabilize, or grow, we can use the microloan program for. There are specific rules um, that you can't use it for. So you can't use it to pay taxes. You can't use it to pay personal debts. You can't use it to pay yourself. And the question that we get is, well, what if I'm an employee? Unfortunately, as the owner of the business and the guarantor of the loan, you cannot directly benefit from the loan funds. Um, what you should be benefiting from is the revenues that the loan funds help you generate. That's where you can pay yourself. 
that was a very eloquent way of describing SBA loan guarantees. Thank you. <laughs> so, for that. Uh, so the only time they've ever lent directly is uh, when there's a disaster. Like yeah, the disaster loans, yeah. yeah. So you're always, it's basically it takes the heat off the lender, right? Or at least 85% of the heat off. Most of it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Um, SBA loans um, offer that extra security to, to the banks and credit unions. So it just puts people who have, um, historically been underrepresented Hispanics, uh, um, people of color, veterans, women, um, get on an even playing field with somebody who might have uh, more credit history, better collateral, something like that. Exactly. Perfect. I don't wanna, it's 11 on the dot. I'm not gonna keep anybody any longer. I wanna thank you for the wonderful presentation. I wanna thank your uh, your co-host in there for uh, providing some fun for us today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've chatted out the presentation to everybody, so you'll have that with you. Uh, I'm gonna dismiss everybody and I'll stay on with you, Salvador, if you have any questions, okay? Perfect, thank you.